We're now going to talk about domain of even root functions. Now, as you can imagine, instead of the root being odd, it's going to be even. And instead of fractional exponents, the denominator being odd, it's going to be even. This is going to be quite different from an odd root function. There are certain stipulations we have to take into account. So an even root function contains even roots or the fractional exponent with even denominators. I want to show you why this is different than odd root functions. Um, if we try to plug in 1 into this function, which is square root, which is even root, we get square root of negative 1, which is undefined. Okay. Since we can't plug that number in and get something back, that means 1 can't be part of the domain. So unlike odd root functions, even root functions is not as simple as our real numbers. We have to um, use a method to figure out what the actual domain is. Now we can plug in 2 and get 0 back, so we, it does have a domain. The question is, where does it stop? Well, this should be a pretty good indication. We can plug in 2 and get 0 back, but notice if you plugged in anything less than 2, you're going to get a negative number back. So what does this mean? Let's read this together. This indicates that we can't plug in all numbers into even root functions. Furthermore, we can't always plug in positive numbers either. We do not know. We do know that what is inside the radical cannot be negative. In other words, it must be bigger than 0. So think about that. When we say something can't be negative, Another way of explaining that is it must be bigger than or equal to zero, which means the stuff inside has to be bigger than or equal to zero. What does that mean? To find the domain of an even root function, you take what's inside the radical and you set it greater than or equal to zero, and you solve. It's that simple. Why? Because we want to ensure that it's not negative. Not negative means greater than or equal to zero. Let's look at the first example. Determine the domain of f of x. Notice that it's an even root function because this is a 6. So therefore, we, we want to make sure that this is positive, so we're going to set it greater than or equal to 0. So step 1, yes, it's an even root function. We're going to take what's inside the radical, and that's key. It says just what's inside the radical, OK? What does that mean? That means that if it's not inside the radical, we don't have to necessarily worry about it. So we're setting what's inside the radical greater than or equal to 0. So we're going to take x minus 7, set it greater than or equal to 0, and solve. In this case, we're going to add 7 to both sides. We get x by itself, and we get x is greater than 7. So what that means is we can plug in anything bigger than or equal to 7 into the function, and we will get something back. If we try to plug in anything other than that, we will not get something back. Let's test that real quick. So again, for the function, we had f of x equals the fourth root of x minus 7. I think that's right. Yeah, sixth root, sorry. doesn't really matter the number, but we'll just be consistent. So that's a 6. All right, so if, if we just say we tried to plug in, so we've already determined we can plug in 8, 9, 10, 11, right? It's going to be positive. But if we try to plug in 6, OK, we're going to get the sixth root of negative 1. And you can't take the even root of a negative number, so that's not going to exist. And since it doesn't exist, that means that the number we originally plugged in is not part of the domain. So it's got to be bigger than or equal to 7. If we plugged in 7, it would be 0, and we would get something back. Example 2. 2x minus 3 to the 5 fourths. f of x equals 2x minus 3 to the 5 fourths. Determine the domain of f of x. Well, notice the denominator is even. So when we convert it to radical form, we will see that, indeed, it is an even root function. Okay, The exponent is 5, it's a numerator, but the root is 4. So it's even root, which means we're going to what? Take what's inside the radical and set it greater than or equal to 0. Okay, And again, that's only for even root. If it's odd root, the domain is all real numbers. Polynomial, all real numbers. So we're taking what's inside the radical, setting it greater than or equal to 0, and then we're going to solve. Now, to get the fifth root out of the, sorry, the power of 5 out of the way, we can raise both powers to the 1 fifth, and 0 to the 1 fifth is still 0. So now all we have to do is add 3, and the final step to get x by itself is to divide by 2. When we divide by 2, we get x is greater than or equal to 3 halves, which means x is greater than or equal to 1.5. So we can plug in 1.5, anything bigger, 
But if we try to plug in something smaller, it's not going to work. We can't plug in 1, for example. And again, we're going to demonstrate that. Again, the function is f of x equals 2x minus 3 to the 5 fourths. Actually, let's plug in something even smaller than 1. Let's plug in 0, which is less than the 1.5 we figured out. So we shouldn't be able to plug it in. If we plug in 0, we get 2 times 0 minus 3 to the 5 fourths. So we get negative 3 to the 5 fourths. And if we convert that, we get the fourth root of negative 3 to the fifth. But wait, you can't take the fourth root of negative 3. There is, no, there is no number that you can take the fourth root of negative 3 and get something back. Nothing times itself four times is negative 3. So it does not exist. And since it does not exist, that means that the number that we try to plug in, which is 0, is not part of the domain. So... The only thing that's part of this domain is x is greater than or equal to 1.5. Now I do want to show one more example. Let's say that we had f of x equals, uh, we'll just do square root because it really doesn't matter, um, 4 minus 3x. Okay, so obviously we're going to take that and set it greater than or equal to 0. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is subtract 4. We get negative 3x is greater than or equal to negative 4. Now, remember, as a recollection, because we're dividing by a negative 3, we basically have to take the sign, which is in the middle, and flip it. So whenever you divide or multiply by a negative number, divide or multiply, you have to flip this sign. As a result, it flips to less than or equal to, and the negative 4 over negative 3 is positive 4 thirds. This, in fact, will give us the domain. In this case, x has to be less than or equal to 4 thirds, or it won't work. And again, that's if you're dividing or multiplying by a negative, you're going to flip this sign. So can we verify that? Well, yes. If Just imagine if you plugged in like 10. You get 4 minus 30, which is a negative number. It won't work. So sometimes your domain for even root functions is going to be less than or equal to a certain number once you flip this sign. If you have any other questions about domain of even root functions, let me know.